For reluctant readers or younger readers, there are several characteristics that go into things that attract them to books that they would otherwise not read or books that they want to read. The size of the book is certainly one of them. The bigger the book, hey, I'm curious about it. Let me check it out. But it's also got graphics. It's got story. There are so many elements that go into an illustrated graphic novel type book that you wonder, okay, is this mix really going to hit and make kids want to read it? Are they going to be attracted to it? When I say kids, I mean like elementary school age kids between like first and fourth grade. It's a hard demographic to capture. This book series, though, it really hammers down into it. And likewise, this publisher. The publisher is Flying Eye Books. And they've just got this niche on this kind of retro, uh, retro look that is modern, yet timeless. All their books... I completely love. This one is no exception. Monster Support Group is the uh, the book series. This specific one is The Mummy's Curse from Laura Suarez. And what makes this book so great, first off, is the size. It's a little bigger than some books that you might expect. It's, it's on par with other illustrated books, but you look at the illustrations and you say to yourself, well, this is a more of a graphic novel. Uh, it's more of a comic book, and it's bigger than that. I'm, I'm curious. Let's check it out. And you've got monsters who have a support group. <laughs> and it's a funny premise. And not like the support group like, hey, you've got bolts in your neck. Let me help you out, buddy. It's the support group of, you have a, an existential crisis. <laughs> what can I do to get you past this monster roadblock? But it does it in a way that's funny. Not preachy. Yeah. Slightly historic, but it's fictional history, and it's just fun. In The Mummy's Curse, it deals with a mummy, uh, a girl mummy, who has been trapped because when she was a girl pharaoh, a young girl pharaoh, she didn't listen to what the pharaoh said, so she got trapped in a thousand-year tomb, and she died there. <laughs> but she became a mummy because of that fact. And she got bought and sold to various museums, and finally at one of these museums, she finds or she meets a young girl who can help her. And the young girl's not scared of her. She's like, hey, what's up? How can I help you? Um, it's just a, a darn cute book. And you can tell by my genuine enjoyment because I, I'm laughing about it. Because I laugh, I'm laughing about my memories of reading the book amongst a group of high school kids who really don't read enough. And because they didn't grow up with books like Monster Support Group. <laughs> the Mummy's Curse. Oh, it's a great book. It is going to be great for those elementary school kids. Even those pre-K kids, middle school kids, will probably be a little bit too old for it. They are too cool for school. So if they've missed the boat on Monster Support Group, that's just life. Some of them might like it. The illustrations are gorgeous. And I think they would if they would look at it, but they won't because they're too cool. So you pre-K kids, you early elementary kids, you elementary school kids, check out Monster Support Group, LL Librarians, Elementary School Librarians. Check out this book. It's really fabulous. The series is great too. There's more coming in the series. The Mummy's Curse, it's book number two in Monster Support Group, and it's going to be great for pre-K kids all the way through the totality of elementary school.